So I had another question from someone that wanted to know about what is reactive hypoglycemia and what could be done about it. I've done other videos on hypoglycemia, but not necessarily reactive hypoglycemia. So let me just explain what it is. Postprandial hypoglycemia means after a meal, and it could happen immediately to four hours later, okay, where you have this drop in blood sugars. After you consumed a high carbohydrate meal, you ended up with low blood sugars, okay? Now to keep this really simple, you have blood sugars that are tightly controlled, okay? So the sugar in the blood after the meal uh, occurs, and there's two sets of hormones involved. One hormone, insulin, is trying to reduce the sugar, okay? And then there's other hormones that are releasing stored sugar that are putting the sugar back into the blood to ensure that the blood sugars don't go too low, okay? So we don't want sugars that are too high and we don't want sugar that's too low because some of the symptoms, if it's too low, would be tired, brain fog, dizzy, craving sweets, blurred vision, irritable, and if it goes even too low, you can actually be in a coma. So the body is trying to stabilize that sugar. In hypoglycemia, you either have an overreaction of high amounts of insulin that's pushing the blood sugars down with too much force and or not enough uh, adrenal support to mobilize the sugar and to raise it. So it's low cortisol, okay, from the adrenals. Let's say your adrenals are burnt out or they're weak and your these counter hormones are not working. Um, it could be also a hormone in your liver called IGF, insulin-like growth factor. And let's say there's a problem with the liver and you don't have that effect. So it could be either adrenal or liver. Or there's another counter hormone in the pancreas called glucagon, which does the opposite of insulin. It mobilizes uh, fuel and it helps to raise the blood sugars. So it can either be a problem with one of these right here. And another situation is that the uh, medical profession a lot of times doesn't really uh, acknowledge that this exists because sometimes when they do testing, everything comes out normal. So there's actual levels of hypoglycemia and you can't just test a, a fasting uh, glucose test. You have to test your blood sugars after your meal, one, two, three, four hours. So you can actually see what happens dynamically. And a lot of times, even the test itself, I don't believe is valid, where you're going to drink this glucose mixture, okay? And they're gonna check your blood sugars every hour for the next three hours. I mean, who consumes or drinks straight glucose? Well, maybe you do if you drink sodas, but um, it'd be good to do this test on the food that people consume, especially the high carbohydrate meals, to really see what happens after you consume that. So it's, sometimes it's difficult to get a validation from the medical uh, profession because it has to be like below 70, okay? But let's say it's 75 or even 80 and you have these symptoms right here. You could have a severe um, insulin resistance situation, have the symptoms, and because you have insulin resistance and insulin controls the input of that glucose into the cell, your cells could be starving of glucose yet have normal blood sugars. So there's different scenarios that could happen. So if you go online and you get data, you're gonna find all sorts of information that is so uh, confusing. So some of the support groups or foundations will talk about the complexities and there's just almost an unlimited amount of causes. It could be this, it could be that. And I wanna just uh, read something because um, I looked at the Q&A and this is what it said. What is the best diet for uh, those who suffer from hypoglycemia? The best diet for hypoglycemia is one that emphasizes healthy fat and protein and low in carbohydrates. Now, I agree with that. I totally agree with that because the elephant in the room is this right here, high carbs. Why don't you just stop eating carbs, okay? It's that simple. I guarantee if you stop doing the carbs and you adapt to fat burning, your blood sugars will come out nicely and you won't have these symptoms anymore. Their bodies are not designed to run off high carbohydrate diets. This is the thing that's abnormal. This is the root cause behind a lot of these issues right here. All right, let me continue. Basically, I said the best diet would be um, protein and fat and low carbohydrates. I agree. Uh, frequent feedings are often necessary to control long-standing functional hypoglycemia. This is where I disagree, okay? Because every time you do frequent meals, and obviously they don't understand this one point, 
you stimulate insulin when you eat, okay? So if you eat less frequent, you'll keep insulin low, and insulin is the thing that's pushing the blood sugars down. So if we don't have high insulin, your blood sugars will be actually be level. The diet for hypoglycemia is designed to avoid a drop in glucose, not, capitalized, fix it after it falls. Why wouldn't we want to design a diet that also fixes this problem, okay? Eating sugar in all its forms, as well as eating refined carbohydrates, triggers excessive reactions by the pancreas. They must be avoided. Yes, this is true because what's happening, the reason why the insulin is high is not for no reason. It's reacting to something. It's reacting to the high carbs and also the frequent meals. So the combination of going low carb, okay, moderate protein, higher fat is very, very smart because there's one more key to this whole puzzle and that is insulin resistance. People that have hypoglycemia also have insulin resistance. And to fix this, you must consume foods that are high in magnesium, potassium, and those are called vegetables. So if you did the low carb, moderate protein, higher fat, with at least seven cups of vegetables, high quality salad, something like that, you're gonna find that you will eventually heal insulin resistance and you won't have this anymore. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.